All right, let's go ahead and go for a stock market weekly recap. We love to see it. This week, believe it or not, a pretty big green week. Pretty big green week. Um, very nice, all things considered. We start with the Dow, uh, then the SP, then the NASDAQ. Then we're going to go over my portfolios, see how they did this week, so you can get that, an idea about that. Um, so the Dow performed pretty well this week, 2.5% up. Uh, brings us year-to-date at down 14.74. Not bad, all things considered. Um, for the S&P 500 sake, uh, we saw a 3.5% gain this week. Pretty big. I mean, every day was was pretty well up. Nothing too crazy besides Wednesday wasn't great, but um, that brings us year to date only down 9.3 on this. That is crazy to think about. Um, nearly de- back to the 3,000. Nearly back to the S&P 500. 3,000, baby. We're getting there. Um, and you think about the NASDAQ closing near 25,000. Ooh, we're getting there. Uh, the NASDAQ saw, uh, or the Dow closed to 25,000, I should say. Um, NASDAQ saw an even better week than everything else by a big chunk. 6% up, um, <laughs> this past, this past week. That's pretty massive. Um, and that brings us year to date up. That's right. The NASDAQ is up this year so far. And there's reasons for that. So, the NASDAQ is very tech heavy, and we think tech heavy. These are companies that aren't really as impacted by this at all, and they were kind of unfairly hit as far as uh, any sort of market dip down was concerned. These companies are actually benefiting from this a little bit more, and they're seeing more traffic on their websites, stuff like that. Um, so that's why you see a year-to-date increase in terms of this. For the portfolios here, my Robinhood portfolio this week was up $938, or the equivalent of 6.75%. So I did outperform even the NASDAQ, baby. Um, No real additions to my portfolio this week. The only change really was Activision Blizzard paid me a dividend in which it got reinvested for uh, pretty much a non-existent share. I mean, 0.011 of a share. So nothing massive there. Um, Pretty cool, though. All things considered, very good week for me. Uh, super excited. Next week, I have some good dividends coming in, so we'll take a look at that. But 6.75% this week. Very nice. My M1 portfolio up to $9,477. Uh, up 4.26% this week. Uh, very nice. Again, I have nice dividends coming next week for this, but only $6.54 came in this week as far as dividends. But overall market gain this week of $379. Uh, very nice. All time on this. Down right around 1.36%, so pretty well break even. I started this one back in 2018, so again, we're very close to break even, so I'm pretty excited. For the Robinhood portfolio, uh, all time we're up around 10%, uh, or $1,300. So pretty nice there, near 15000 with that again. At one point, we were um, at, at 18000 but we don't care. Okay, we're, we'll move past that. Uh, so for news today, we have obviously the most important bit of news would be the April jobs report. Uh, in which we lost 20.5 million jobs. That's rough. Um, but the consensus was 21.5 million. So we did beat that by 1 million, which is actually a massive number in that. Uh, versus the previous, mo- previous month of March, which was only 870,000. Uh, yeah, kind of scary, all things considered, but um, not good. Unemployment rate went to... 14.7 um, versus a consensus of 16.4. So it's a beat in that aspect if you want to think about that versus a 4.4% prior. That's crazy. Um, yeah, that's crazy to think about. Um, so, yeah, I mean, highest is, oh my gosh, that's crazy. It's highest it's been since the Great Depression. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's weird looking at those numbers and seeing the market doing what it's doing. But, you know, that's fine. We do see the U.S. though um, really trying to get rid of their supply chain needs in China. Uh, not necessarily get rid of 100%, but eliminate the fact that we are so reliant on them. And this is something that the president has been talking about for quite a while, uh, even before he was president. Um, and it makes sense having one country really rule a vast majority of the manufacturing in the world. It's kind of messed up. I mean, if something like negative were to happen, I mean, between the 
that country and another country? I mean, do we stay loyal to who? I mean, what does it look like for them? Or even if there's conflict between the two of us, what if they just decide to hold all the merchandise? They're not giving it to us. I mean, I'm not saying it would happen, but uh, just, yeah, it, it makes sense to pull at least some of it. We see some companies um, like Apple pulling around 40% of their supply chain of AirPods. They're going to start producing them in Vietnam. So we'll see a lot of companies probably pull uh, a percentage of their manufacturing from China. Um so we saw Disney uh, completely decide to forego their first half dividend payouts. Um, you know, not fun to see, but I do believe they will pay it in the second quarter. Um, or second, I'm sorry, I should say second half of the year, which usually gets paid in December. So it's not unexpected. We saw them completely lose revenue from uh, their parks and travel. No, I mean, obviously they don't have that going on right now, but this next quarter uh, and the rest of the year they will. We have Shanghai Disneyland open, and most likely um, in the United States, we'll see Disneyland open to an extent um, come late Ju- late June, uh, maybe early July. The forecast is for July 15th. I think it'll be a little bit earlier, and demand will be massive. I'll say that right now. Shanghai uh, <clears throat> Shanghai Disneyland sold out right away, uh, within days. So just telling you that. Um, Take as did for the first couple days of opening, but you see U.S. airlines up reportedly burning through ten billion dollars a month total. That is scary. The industry is burning more than ten billion dollars a month. Um, gosh, that is just crazy. Um, it will emerge from the crisis a mere shadow of what it was just three short months ago, says CEO Nicholas Calio. Um, if Carriers were to refund all tickets. This will result in a negative cash balances that will lead to bankruptcies. Um, yeah, crazy, crazy thing to think about. Some airliners might go under. Um, some will just continue to burn money like no one's business, uh, aka uh, Boeing. Um, but yeah, it's it, very weird to think about that. Ten billion dollars a freaking month. Cool, that's crazy. Um, we do see a crazy crazy number out of China actually uh, where they actually reported a 1% increase in auto sales in April are you kidding me <clears throat> in quarter one they saw a 43% drop in sales but in April they saw a 1% year-over-year growth there hasn't been growth in China for quite a while uh, very in, 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 uh, very exciting to see uh, if you think about you know companies that play a big role in there um, Ford said they had some growth there, but think about someone like a Neo. They showed very good numbers in April. Their April sales report was massive, um, very good for them. So their their economy's starting to go back again. I mean, they're starting again, so that's exciting to, to see for Chinese auto. Very cyclical industry, obviously the auto industry. So um, you see the U.S. and China working on trade deals yet again. So. Top trade negotiators from the U.S. and China talked by phone overnight, uh, pledging to create governmental infrastructures uh, necessary to make the Phase 1 trade deal a success. That's right, we still have a trade war going on in the middle of this nightmare. Um, in spite of uh, current global health emergency, both countries fully expect to meet their obligations under the agreement in a timely manner. They call alleviated tensions seen earlier this week after... Uh, President Dani threatened to terminate the pact if China failed to buy the promised goods and services from the United States, including farm, um, crop, stuff like that. Um, and finally, we have, what a shocker, Elon Musk saying something wild. But I don't know if I blame him for it. So uh, Elon Musk says Tesla is filing a lawsuit against the Alameda County uh, against Alameda County immediately. His tweet maintains that the unelected and ignorant uh, interim health officer of Alameda is acting contrary to the governor, um, the U.S. president, and the Constitution. Elon Musk has been kind of a weird voice of sanity in all this. He's a weird guy. I'm not going to get you wrong there. Um, but I kind of am with him on some of these things. Um, I mean, California is being ridiculous. Completely ridiculous. And Elon Musk says he's moving his production out of California. They're based right now, headquartered in California, in Fremont. He's saying they're completely going to move to Texas. 
um, Texas or Nevada immediately. Uh, it, it, it's going to re- retain Fremont Manufacturing. It will, If it will retain any Fremont Manufacturing at all, it will depend on how Tesla is treated in the future. Now that is a ballsy, ballsy statement. I, you know, I understand why they're doing it. Uh, I appreciate that being a thing, honestly. Good job for, for Elon Musk there, and we'll see how that goes for them, but obviously more costs ahead, but, um... Tesla's the last car maker left in California is one thing to say. They are so strict in California. I think it's a smart move by the company to move out of there and all things all things considered. So very good move from Tesla, I guess. Uh, that, that's your weekly update, though.